this live session, study civil engineering with Politecnico di Milano. I hope you enjoy this live session and learn a lot about all the opportunities that this amazing university offers. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please write them on the second window of your chat tab, the one that says questions. We will not answer anything on the chat. Okay, so let's start now. I will introduce you to our presenters for today. We have Marina Carbonchi. Um, we also have Professor Fabio Biondini, Professor Roberto Paolucci, Alessandra Balestreri, Chiara Smersini. They all represent Politecnico di Milano. And we also have some former Polymy students. So welcome Carlo Giovanni, Giovanni Piuno, and Matteo Parpanesi. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And let's begin with the presentation. So, first of all, thank you for being here. Um, Politecnico di Milano has been offering high quality education, design, of fashion. Of, it's an industrial hub and also center of culture, an important cultural center. Here you can see some iconic buildings in Milan, the cathedral and the gallery, which was the first structure made of iron and glass connecting the cathedral to the famous Scala Theatre. Here you can see also some iconic uh, modern buildings, skyscrapers. It is a very lively city with a huge cultural offer. If any concert or any exhibition comes to Italy, it comes to Milan. So this is why students love being here because they can enjoy life outside the classroom and see beauty throughout centuries. Milan is also very well connected with public means of transport inside the city, but also with the, the other parts of Italy and the, with Europe. So you can take the chance to travel throughout Italy and Europe and to see so much and to experience a lot also outside the classroom. So, as I told you, Milan is in the north of Italy, in the Lombardy region. This is where we have our main programs, but we also have some other programs that are taught in surrounding uh, um, towns. But the Bachelor uh, of, uh, Engin of Engineering in uh, Civil Engineering is taught in Milan, so in our main campus. Politecnico di Milano is not only important for education, it is also extremely important for research. It is the Italian um, university that is able to attract more funds from, from the European Union for research purposes. So we have a huge amount of projects funded by the um, European Union. And as a consequence, uh, um, we have a huge protection in terms uh, of uh, um, patents and we have many spin-offs we have also excellent laboratories where students who proceed their studies with us will be able to carry out their research work together with our excellent staff um, a structure which is important for civil engineering is the wind tunnel we, we have here in milan the largest wind tunnel in europe Polymy is a very international university. The, this process has been going on for the past 15 years. And at present, we have almost 7,000 international students coming from more than 100 different countries. So as you can imagine, this is a huge opportunity for you as a student to have an international outlook and to have your own contacts, to have friends coming from many different countries, to help you learn to work in team, to understand different cultures. But in terms of quality, um, it is important to know when you look for a university that you choose a university that is acknowledged everywhere as an outstanding uh, university. According to the QS University uh, rankings, which is one of the most important worldwide, we are the first Italian university 
ranked fifth in design, tenth in architecture, and twentieth in overall engineering, thirteenth in civil engineering. Politecnico di Milano has got very strong links to other important institutions um, and belongs to important associations and alliances such as Idea League and Enhance. So this means that you will have top quality uh, teachers coming here to hold their lectures and the opportunity of many um, mobility of many exchanges with other outstanding universities. This is definitely a plus for students as well. So just to let you understand how our system works. First of all, we have three, uh, 13 years of school. Then we have three years at bachelor level, two years at master of science level, and then three years at PhD level. Our bachelor of science uh, is mainly taught in Italian, but today we are able to offer you two programs uh, that are taught in English and especially civil engineering will be our today's focus. But after uh, then, at Master of Science level and at PhD level, most of the programs will be entirely in English. So there is a huge educational offer, with um, which means a lot of international students interested. So this is just to give you an idea of the number of uh, uh, English taught programs at Master of Science level, a high number of international students. We offer many uh, services to our international students, a dedicated welcome week. There are students' associations, language courses, um, sporting facilities, of course, some help in finding accommodation. Um, it's possible in some cases to have a buddy. Um, it will be really a great experience. There are many opportunities of meeting new friends and enjoying life. Let me spend a couple of words now about the current situation because everyone is worried about COVID. And so maybe you are scared of thinking of coming to Italy. Now the situation is improving. And uh, we want to let you understand that we have never laid our students down. Uh, what, since the um, COVID broke down, we were able to offer online courses to everyone. Students could graduate without any delay. So, and our university took responsibility also for the uh, community by being a uh, support to uh, by um, testing uh, protection devices for medical um, equipment and so on. So this is important to know at present we're offering uh, our uh, lessons in blended mode, which means students can either come on campus or in case of uh, any um, travel bands, they can follow lessons from the home desk. But of course, from the next academic year, we hope we will be able to go back to our normal life. Why should you choose Politecnico? Of course, but this is not the time to stop. It's the time to invest on yourself to prepare for a better future. And an outstanding education will definitely open you uh, many employability and uh, many employment possibilities. We have at Polytechnico a very uh, effective career service organizing job fairs on campus. And companies know that our students are so well prepared, so they address our career service to be in touch with our graduate students. In fact, the employability data are excellent. You can see 91% of our engineers find an occupation within one year after their graduation. And this applies both to Italians and to international students. If you want to take a, um, a look at our statistics within the career service uh, portal, this is, of course, possible. So I you give the floor now to the professors who will introduce you to the program of civil engineering at bachelor level, entirely taught in English, and then you will get to know more about civil engineering and the experience of students at our university. I really wish you all the best and thank you for uh, staying with us. If you have any questions, please ask in the dedicated chat. Bye.
Thank you very much, Marina. Welcome everyone, once again. Uh, I'm Fabio Biondini, I'm a professor of uh, structural engineering at Polytechnic Milano, and currently I'm serving as the chair of the degree program. And I'm very glad to share with you a short presentation of the uh, degree program in civil engineering. Uh, I will focus more on uh, the um, objectives and content of the educational program uh, and uh, a more uh, uh, broad, a broader presentation about the civil engineering areas will follow with a, with a, um, a talk by Professor Roberto Paolo Cilederon. So talking about civil engineering, uh, uh, we can start uh, with a very simple question. What does a civil engineering do? So to answer this question, just take a look around because civil engineering is dealing with uh, everything is built uh, for the welfare of society and communities uh, and that is improving uh, our quality of life. More specifically, uh, civil engineering is dealing with planning, design, construction, assessment, monitoring, maintenance and management uh, of structures and infrastructures. These are the key words of our uh, activity and uh, structural infrastructure include uh, buildings, uh, bridges, tunnels, dams, water collection, distribution and drainage systems, and transportation systems such as roads, railways, airports, and airports. And the uh, civil engineers uh, are dealing not only with the uh, concept generation and the activity um, of planning and design, but they have to take care about uh, construction, operation and maintenance of structures and infrastructure over the entire life cycle. And uh, as peculiarity of uh, in this activity is uh, the wide spectrum of uh, uh, structural infrastructure facility that we are dealing with. And um, this um, is also reflected in the content of the educational program that should provide a solid background and uh, broad competencies in order to afford all kind of problem that are involved in civil engineering. Um, looking uh, uh, into the um, educational program uh, for what concerns the bachelor level uh, we have a three-year program Politecnico di Milano where uh, in the first and uh, part of the second year we are addressing uh, basic disciplines uh, such as mathematics uh, geometry physics uh, computer science chemistry and rational mechanics second part of the second year and the third year will be more devoted to core disciplines such as surveying and data processing uh, structural mechanics and design hydraulics and hydraulic engineering geotechnics uh, and construction of roads railways and airports we have uh, two tracks uh, one in italian and one in english uh, the one in english is uh, has been recently established uh, and the two tracks are uh, uh, equivalent for what concerns the content uh, with uh, some uh, specialties uh, that receive a uh, uh, higher focus uh, in the third year for example in the new track in english we are focusing on uh, subject of high topicality and importance uh, such as diagnostic monitoring maintenance and management of existing structures and infrastructures at the end of the three-year program uh, you can decide to handle the job market uh, or how it is a uh, uh, frequent uh, uh, choice uh, to improve your education and uh, um, enter a master of science education program it may look that it's uh, quite early to uh, think about the Master of Science, uh, but it's not uh, actually true because it is important that since the beginning uh, you realize which are the um, specialties and the um, areas of civil engineering you are uh, more uh, uh, attracted and uh, attracted by, and uh, which is uh, um, your uh, um, main expectation for your future activity. For this reason, let me say also a few words about uh, how our program uh, for the Master of Science, we call the Laurea Magistrale. We have a two-year program uh, that is organized in different tracks. I'll say a little bit more about the tracks in a while. And uh, uh, at the end of uh, the two-year program, you can again enter the job market or uh, also here you can decide to improve your education, perhaps more oriented uh, uh, toward the professional activity with postgraduate master programs uh, or uh, more uh, dealing with research activity and uh, so you can decide to apply for a doctoral program. Um, also, I uh, want to mention that during the uh, two-year program of the Master of Science, uh, you can join a variety of uh, additional uh, educational uh, uh, programs uh, such as exchange 
projects uh, and uh, uh, double degree programs at both national and international level. And uh, it is worth mentioning that Polytechnic Milano includes also double degree program internal uh, to, to the uh, university with other Master of Science uh, uh, program that are currently active. Uh, and uh, we have double degrees uh, currently with mathematical engineering, uh, materials engineering and nanotechnology and mechanical engineering. Uh, let me say a few words about the, the tracks that are currently active in our Master of Science program because they address uh, the main areas of uh, civil engineering and uh, they will be uh, discuss a little bit more in depth in the next uh, uh, presentation, but uh, just to let you know that we have uh, five tracks uh, that are listed here. Let me start from earthquake engineering that has been recently established. Uh, earthquake engineering is dealing with seismic design of new structures, assessment and retrofit of existing structures, and the effect of surface geology on the earthquake uh, uh, ground motion. We have uh, the track uh, on structures, uh, dealing with structural design and assessment of civil and industrial buildings, uh, large structures, bridges, uh, and structure for industrial plants. We have geotechnics uh, uh, related to all problems uh, concerning foundations, uh, retaining walls, tunnels, stabilities of slopes, and excavations. Hydraulics. Uh, 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 addressing uh, free surface water and groundwater, use of water resources, uh, land hydraulic protection, civil and industrial plants. And finally, transportation infrastructures uh, dealing with all problems related to design, construction and management uh, of roads, railways, airports and airports. Um, three of uh, these five tracks are fully delivered in English and namely earthquake engineering, uh, uh, structures and uh, geotechnics. Uh, what about job opportunities? Civil engineers uh, work in all fields of construction and infrastructure and they easily found a job uh, uh, in professional firms and companies uh, uh, operating in the design, construction and maintenance of uh, civil structures and infrastructure systems, uh, universities and higher education uh, research institutions, uh, public offices responsible for design, planning and control of urban land management uh, and uh, companies, bodies and agencies dealing with management and control of structural and infrastructural facilities. So, um, Civil engineering graduates at Politecnico di Milano are highly regarded by the society and easily find a job. The employment rate uh, is particularly high. Uh, uh, we have 95% of our uh, graduates that find a job uh, within one year after uh, graduation and 90% of them within six months. Um, for additional information uh, also about uh, uh, application procedures and also enrollment at Politecnico di Milano, you can uh, refer to the International Student Office. You have your uh, reference link and uh, you can interact with them uh, using the chat or writing uh, emails. And uh, today with us, uh, uh, we have uh, Mrs. Alessandra Balestredi from the International Student Office that can also answer your question in the chat. I will also provide uh, uh, series of links uh, later on uh, that where um, you can uh, uh, that you can use to download some informative materials and this will include uh, a wider presentation a slideshow about uh, our civil engineering degree program uh, a brochure and a couple of videos uh, that uh, um, bring you a little bit more in depth uh, uh, in our activities and uh, um, for the uh, next uh, days and weeks. Uh, if you want to um, uh, be uh, informed about uh, all our activities, please visit uh, the website of the degree program that is constantly updated uh, and where you can find all the information uh, uh, related to uh, educational activities and also um, related uh, um, informative uh, uh, material. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to welcoming you at Politecnico di Milano. And with this, I leave uh, the floor to Professor Roberto Paolucci, who will address uh, uh, the civil engineering uh, field a little bit more in depth so that you can have a um, better understanding of uh, what uh, you're going to face with uh, if you select our degree program. Ms. Roberto. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Professor Biondini, for this introduction. And let me join uh, uh, welcoming you to this uh, first experience in uh, Politecnico di Milano and uh, uh, more specifically in the introduction to the bachelor program in, uh, in civil engineering. 
Um, okay, I, I, I will try to, to, to give you a glance, to give you an overview of what is a civil engineering, also in view of the uh, preparation, the education that will be done uh, within the, the programs of uh, available at Politecnico di Milano. So, um, what is a civil engineer? And I, I think that uh, probably this is uh, the easiest uh, uh, answer to be to to be given because uh, all in all, to understand what is the role and uh, is the objective of civil engineering, you just have to take a look around, and uh, you will see whatever um, built. Uh, structure that you will see actually uh, either buildings, bridges, or tunnels, uh, uh, roads, and uh, whatever uh, anything that is built around us uh, that enhances the quality of life is the objective of a civil engineer. And you, as a civil engineer, you will be requested to uh, contribute uh, to this, uh, to the uh, not only to the design. Uh, of uh, new structures and infrastructures, but uh, more specifically also to the maintenance and monitoring of existing structures. And I think that uh, in this uh, perspective, uh, what is uh, really uh, fascinating of the uh, task of a civil engineer is that uh, uh, what you are uh, uh, required to do, the objective of your work is, uh, uh, okay, not only fundamental for your uh, the satisfaction of your work, but it, it is also fundamental for the society, for its progress. And uh, another really uh, crucial thing of the uh, activity of a civil engineer is that uh, what you are doing is uh, uh, closely interacting with the environment, with the physical environment, and uh, with the many other uh, expertises and disciplines that deal with the, the urban or natural environment. So uh, this is another um, um, feature of the civil engineer. It's uh, uh, his her capability to uh, interact with the, in a multidisciplinary environment. And as I was saying, uh, not only design of new structures, but also to take care of what is uh, the, uh, the the existing built environment, and for uh, for these purposes, actually, uh, the, the the civil engineer is nowadays requested to um, provide the structures and infrastructure with some characteristics that are. Uh, uh, can be summarized, as you see in this slide, uh, as uh, safety, functionab uh, functionality, durability, sustainability, and resilience. And for these purposes that uh, you, as a civil engineer, you will request it to, to, to provide, uh, you also need to um, take advantage of advanced methodologies and uh, innovative technical solutions. Uh, so, um, really, uh, what is uh, really fascinating of a civil engineer is that you have at your hands uh, the possibility to contribute in, uh, in shaping the future of uh, the uh, urban environment or the natural environment into which uh, you are living, you are dealing with. Uh, but uh, and uh, this uh, reshaping of the future is uh, typically by uh, using um, increasingly audacious design solutions, uh, as you see in this uh, in this slide, but also uh, taking care of uh, the fragility of uh, the existing built environment and the natural territory. So uh, you have to deal with these uh, two uh, different aspects, design of new structures, maintenance and protection of existing structures, maintenance and protection 
of the natural environment. And uh, as you see from these examples that, of course, uh, come from our experience in Italy, uh, the, the fragility comes from the, uh, the, the effect of earthquakes uh, on, the, on the built environment, as you see from these uh, tremendous uh, uh, pictures of some uh, uh, towns that were hit by the recent earthquakes in 2016, but also the tremendous effects on uh, the uh, monuments that uh, Italy is uh, rich of, and also Milan is rich of, um, that uh, of course uh, uh, may be more and more um, subjected to the effect of the earthquake ground motion and uh, fragility also related to floods, landslides, uh, and uh, uh, that I, I guess that uh, um, most of the countries that you belong to are also subjected to, as uh, Italy is. So, uh, big challenges uh, that uh, the civil engineer is uh, continuously facing with uh, that come from, as I was saying, from the uh, protection from uh, uh, natural catastrophes, hydrogeological risk, seismic risk, but uh, the um, ongoing impact of uh, the, the climate changes uh, that all in all uh, provide um, a, a change of the, the way of thinking to, to structure. So, uh, reconsidering the risk for existing structure, reconsidering the design of structures during the, uh, within their whole life cycle, and uh, as we were saying uh, before, providing these uh, major uh, features safety, resilience, durability, sustainability to structures and uh, infrastructures. And uh, uh, of course, uh, in, the, in the bachelor program, you will be introduced to the basic issues of uh, civil engineering. Uh, and uh, as uh, it was mentioned before by Professor Biondini, uh, within the program, uh, starting from the bachelor, but uh, with more uh, qualification and characterization during the master program, uh, you will uh, uh, be able to select uh, the, 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 the track that is uh, most uh, suitable for your, uh, um, for your uh, expertise, for your future expertise, uh, from uh, uh, hydraulics, uh, transportation infrastructures uh, that are taught in Italian, the master level, uh, and geotechnics, earthquake engineering structures that at the master level, as you see from the flag, are taught instead in, uh, in English. So my task now is to uh, give you a kind of uh, real an overview of what are the basic uh, uh, characteristics of these different tracks, but all in all, what are also the, the common aspects that uh, characterize all these tracks as tracks of uh, civil engineering. So uh, let us start uh, with uh, hydraulics. So we are talking of uh, all the uh, works, not only the construction works, but also the management works uh, that relate uh, with the water as uh, a, one of the basic resources for uh, human society. So the management and use uh, for uh, um, energy purposes of, uh, of the water, uh, so a strict connection also with the industrial world. Um, on one side, but also on the other side, uh, in this sketch you see works for the regimentation and protection of the riverbeds that is uh, so critical to prevent uh, on one side the natural catastrophes, but also on the other side uh, to optimize uh, the uh, management of, res of the water resource. And, uh, also, this uh, picture shows, uh, uh, say, a sketch, just to give you the idea of another very basic feature that is common to uh, most uh, of the civil engineering, that is the uh, modelization and simulation, numerical simulation, of a real complex problem. You, you should understand that uh, civil engineering, uh, since it is dealing with uh, uh, large-scale structures interacting within uh, a complex environment needs, uh, basically, the uh, 
what is uh, one of the main characteristics, I would say, of the engineers, not only of uh, uh, civil engineers, but the engineers in general, that is the capacity to model, to simplify the complexity of reality within uh, some uh, analytical or numerical models that can be dealt with. In this case, for example, uh, to deal with the transportation of uh, two-phase materials consisting of water, but with uh, also with presence of uh, sands, uh, with the scope of understanding how the presence of uh, uh, the, the, the grains of sand may erode the surface of the tubes, of the pipes, into which the, the transportation of the fluid occurs. So uh, you, you can understand how the complexity of the real world can become and uh, dealing now, now with uh, uh, transportation engineering, transportation and infrastructure engineering, uh, you may understand uh, how it is also a fascinating world of uh, managing these um, uh, critical terminals for uh, major terminals for uh, transportation uh, from the railway. Of course, the, this is a picture from the railway central railway station in Milano. Uh, railway terminals, uh, maritime tra terminals, and this is again from uh, Italy, from Genova, uh, air terminals, uh, uh, but also uh, major uh, motorway interconnection works. And uh, just also having a look at this picture, you can understand how uh, complex and but also fascinating is uh, the task of a civil engineer because the civil engineer will not only be requested to say design the specific structure in this uh, say motorway interconnection but also it, it, he or she will be required to strongly interact with many other uh, say expertises because this uh, single structure as you can see clearly from this picture, interacts with the existing urban environment, interacts with the flux of traffic, uh, interacts with the uh, management of uh, the, the uh, transportation, interacts with the public administration, interacts with the urban planning experts. So this is really the, the role of a civil engineer as uh, a, a member of uh, an equip of uh, experts that uh, acts as a multidisciplinary um, expertise within uh, the uh, urban environment. Uh, geotechnics. Uh, geotechnics deals uh, with the uh, design and uh, assessment of uh, underground structures, foundation structures, it is really another major uh, fascinating world where um, you, you may imagine actually that uh, uh, or you may or may not imagine how complicated is uh, to deal uh, with uh, something that is so common just uh, uh, the sand the clay under our feet um, one may think of uh, say the, the uh, mechanical uh, physics, astronomy as uh, uh, the, the, the realm of uh, the complexity, but uh, also the realm of complexity is understanding how the soil behaves, how one can design structures uh, underground uh, founded within uh, such a complex and a very variable uh, type of uh, materials that uh, occur just at the foundation level. So um, tunneling and new, uh, say, underground structures like uh, uh, these uh, works uh, for the realization of the underground, the new underground line in Milano, but also um, providing a design for uh, complex foundation systems like you see in this uh, sketch. And again, in many cases, by taking advantage of numerical modeling. And uh, geotechnics uh, that has not only the uh, rule of uh, the role, sorry, of uh, say uh, designing and uh, new structures, but also to providing safety to existing structures. Uh, you may uh, have seen the picture of this uh, 
uh, very most one of the most famous uh, uh, Middle Age monuments in uh, uh, in Italy that is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. You may just imagine. Uh, Okay, its characteristics is uh, that is linear, of course, uh, but uh, you can imagine that uh, this is also a structural problem because uh, the increasing um, inclination of the axis of the vertical axis of the of the of the tower may lead to the instability and then collapse of the structure itself. And this was the situation just uh, 20 years ago. It was really the inclination got uh, so high that we were really at the, at the very limit of uh, instability. And there, the role of the geotechnical engineer to, for the safety of this tower was uh, to, uh, say, try to invert the tendency to inclination by extracting soil from the uh, top side of the, of the foundation in order for the uh, tower to recover some of its uh, verticality and this was really a major success in the recent past of uh, geotechnical engineering that has now led to safety of this uh, very famous monument also another fascinating aspect of uh, civil engineering and geotechnics is uh, the uh, construction of uh, new territories gained from example from uh, from the sea from offshore as you see in this example of the famous Osaka airport in Japan that is was constructed uh, brand new on a new territory with uh, reclaimed land or claimed uh, soil uh, that led to this uh, very major infrastructure. And then earthquake engineering. Uh, again, something very uh, fascinating because also of uh, the compenetration of uh, different expertises from the definition of uh, hazard of seismic hazard that is mainly led by the uh, seismological expertise to the um, definition of the vulnerability of structures that is mainly led by structural engineers to the exposure uh, that uh, uh, counts in a sense the value, uh, the economic or societal value of the territory that may be subjected to uh, an earthquake, that is subjected to earthquake risk, uh, that is mainly led by uh, urban planners and uh, management engineers. Uh, and this is also something that is uh, really critical and I saw uh, many of you come actually from uh, um, countries that are subjected to, to, uh, to, to major seismic risk uh, and in Italy we have the problem of uh, existing all the structures that uh, as you can understand are very vulnerable to, um, to, to the earthquake loading uh, monuments that uh, may be uh, that are typically subjected to high risk so that they need strengthening with the different types of uh, approaches that are uh, actually in uh, uh, thought in this uh, uh, in this track and also the uh, other famous uh, um, types of approaches for uh, say uh, reducing the, the the seismic loading so the, therefore the for improving the, the, the seismic capacity of structures, that is structures founded on uh, isolation systems that uh, in a sense decouple the response of the structure with respect to the soil. So they reduce the effect of the inertia forces uh, given by the earthquake to the structure itself. And this is something that uh, is very, uh, we are actually very active in, uh, in in Politecnico, also with uh, some uh, very interesting uh, laboratory experiments uh, that are uh, carried out typically in our structural laboratory, where, for example, if you look at the top uh, right side of this slide, you will see some other, say, dissipation devices that uh, allow different portions of a structure to move uh, one with respect to the other and dissipate energy to these. Uh, say uh, sliding elements and the dissipation of energy is one of the key issues for earthquake engineering and then uh, just going on in uh, alphabetic order 
uh, the structure uh, itself that is probably the most uh, say mm, say uh, natural way of thinking of civil engineering but uh, we have seen that is not the only way that is design of new structures you have already seen the picture of this uh, um, high-rise building in uh, in milano in the in the presentation uh, in the, the first presentation introducing milano um, and uh, but uh, say not only design of new structures but as we were saying before uh, all the problems related to the maintenance and monitoring of uh, existing structures. That has become a, a major uh, objective in most countries of the world uh, through different approaches. And for example, another uh, here in this, uh, in this, um, with this objective, you can also understand how important is the interaction, not only of the structural engineers, but with with the other expertises like uh, the the, um, the transportation and the management engineer, in order to understand uh, what are or what may be the consequences of the interruption of uh, roads for the uh, maintenance operation, and also with the um, geophysical uh, and um, um, survey engineering uh, related to the monitoring also from uh, GPS uh, stations in order to have a rapid assessment of the quality of the existing structures, of the quality and the, the um, stability of existing structures. And then another major example that is of major interest for for us in Italy, but uh, for uh, many of the countries where are you actually from, that is the uh, understanding uh, the old monuments. And here again, the, there is a major complexity and where is complexity? It is also the uh, fascinating thing of the activity, for example, of a civil engineer in um, understanding the uh, behavior of the materials of the old historical materials uh, uh, with which these uh, monuments are made of, uh, the quality of material, uh, the mechanical behavior of these materials, but also the mechanical response of the structural complex. And this also, again, puts the emphasis on the capacity of the civil engineer also to deal with uh, the numerical modeling of a complex reality. And then uh, let me just uh, uh, finish with this uh, last slide for the uh, introduction of uh, the, the different topics that uh, the uh, civil engineering, and in this case, the structural engineering is dealing with, uh, not only the interest of the structural engineer is in civil structures, but also in industrial structures. And in this case, for example, micro structures, uh, dimensions that are of the order of the micron, so, uh, so one thousand of a milli, uh, one thousandth of a millimeter. So micro devices that are a structure in itself and are the keys also the, the understanding their structural response is a key to understand how these micro devices may um, may may uh, be introduced in all those uh, devices that now we are living with, uh, like uh, the smartphone uh, and the, all, the, um, all the small devices within, uh, micro devices within uh, our smartphone, for example, accelerometers, gyroscopes, uh, pressure sensors, and so on. So also a strong connection with the industrial world. So uh, this is just to tell you that uh, we have a number of uh, so the, the, the civil engineer is actually uh, rooted within society. It is uh, uh, required to uh, protect the existing built environment, to uh, provide a solution for the new uh, built environment, for the new structures. And uh, this civil engineer will uh, uh, really take advantage of uh, new opportunities uh, 
uh, given by innovative materials, uh, the uh, tools from uh, automation and uh, electronic engineering, uh, tools for uh, uh, optimum monitoring and diagnostics uh, uh, for existing structure and infrastructures, uh, tools uh, coming from the artificial intelligence, uh, and the tools coming from uh, the uh, numerical simulation. So this is really the, uh, my, my, my last slide. So uh, I, I really hope that uh, you will join us at Politecnico di Milano and consider that uh, uh, in whatever country of the world, uh, you will be a civil engineer. So civil engineering really does not change from Italy to Chile to Canada or to whatever country you will be, you will have uh, your uh, qualification of civil engineer and consider, as we have said before, that the Politecnico di Milano is really giving a very high quality uh, education in this, uh, in this case. The, the high ranking that you have seen, 13, uh, rank uh, at the world level, uh, I don't know exactly at the European level, but it should be second, uh, in any case, the very top uh, score in terms of uh, ranking also at the European level, uh, tells you that uh, the students at Politecnico di Milano really have uh, a, a very high quality education. So uh, really don't miss this opportunity, it will be you will be really satisfied with that. So thank you very much for the attention. And uh, so I give the word uh, to the following speaker. I think it's my turn. Can you, Hi, can you see? Um, no, I think, uh, sorry. Um, first of all, thank you, Roberto. For your presentation, and uh, I believe now we have a short presentation by Mrs. Balestreri, I believe, uh, about the uh, enrollment procedures. Okay, I think I am the last, but anyway, if you want, I can start uh, right now. Uh, if you can, Carla, show my presentation. Okay. Thank you, Carla. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Alessandra Balestreri. I work for uh, the International Students Office uh, in uh, Leonardo Campus, and uh, in a specific, I'm in charge uh, in the undergraduate admission. I don't see Alessandra. Um, in the specific, I'm uh, in charge for the undergraduate program uh, uh, admission procedure. So, um, the first information I think is very important that you have to know is the uh, basically requirements we need for the students uh, with a foreign degree in order to enter in a Politecnico or in any case in any, in any other Italian university. So, the first requirements is uh, you, uh, you need 12 years of schooling then uh, we ask uh, some additional requirements for uh, students uh, with uh, an uh, IB diploma, the International Baccalaureate, uh, for the British and uh, American high school. Um, the enrollment documents uh, we need in order to complete the enrollment procedure are the Declaration of Value and the high school diploma translated and legalized from Italian Embassy in your country. Then, uh, the information regarding the admission procedure for to enter in the civil engineering course in English could be different for two categories. The first category we consider are the uh, students uh, considered equivalent to uh, Italian candidates. So, uh, in this uh, category, uh, we con um, are included the, the students with the Italian or European nationality. So, in this case, you are considered equivalent to Italian candidates. And in order to register, uh, you have to follow the same procedure like Italian students, just if you have or Italian or European nationality or if you are students of all nationalities with an Italian degree, or non-EU students 
residing in Italy with a valid residence permit. So the second category uh, we consider is the non-EU students residing abroad with an international degree. So basically it means that all candidates who, uh, in order to register uh, or to enroll uh, at the Politecnico, need a visa for study. This is considered as international. So if you have an international citizenship and you are in the category of non-EU students residing abroad, in order to uh, register in the civil engineer course, you have to, like the first step, register to the Polytechnical website. Uh, so you have to register in the online services in order to obtain the credential to enter uh, in your personal page. Then uh, you have to send a scanned copy of your alternative test to the International Students Office. So that means if you want to register in civil engineering course and in English and you are international students, uh, you can uh, register just if you have one of the alternative tests set from Politecnico. And the, alter the alternative tests uh, are the SAT certification, the GMAT, the, T the TOLC I, and the GRE. Regarding the SAT, uh, you have to submit the SAT test. And the sessions accepted are the evidence based and reading and writing and the maths. So, uh, plus the SAT subject test. In the section physics and mathematics uh, in the level one or two. Uh, the SAT test could be replaced with the SAT. So that means you have to submit, in this case, the SAT plus the SAT subject test. Regarding the um, GRE uh, certification, we accept the session of verbal and quantitative and analytical writing. For uh, the GMIT, we accept uh, the sessions of verbal, quantitative and analytical writing, the same. And regarding the TOLCAI, is uh, the online test held from the CISIA. It is an engineering test. And uh, uh, you can enroll only if your uh, test score is uh, at the least equivalent to the minimum TOL score required. And uh, the minimum TOL score required is uh, 60. Uh, if you want, anyway, you have to submit uh, the alternative test scores and send it to International Students Office within July 10. Uh, if you are uh, a equivalent students or uh, students with European citizenship, uh, you can uh, uh, register in the civil engineering course or with the TOL test. The TOL test is the admission test held from Politecnico and uh, it is just in Italian language. In order to register in the uh, TOL test, uh, you have to before register uh, in the online services and uh, in order to obtain the credential to enter in your personal page, enter in the link uh, um, used for the registration in the test. You have to select the course of civil engineering in English and then you, have, you can finish the registration in the test uh, with the payment. Also, if you have European citizenship or you are Italian student with a foreign degree, you can um, also use the alternative uh, test, so the SAT, the GRE, the GMAT and the TOLC uh, E. Um, then, um, 
the deadline in order to submit uh, uh, this, uh, uh, certi this uh, certification is uh, the July 10. Uh, then I finish my presentation. So uh, I leave the floor for the next, uh, I think there is the students and uh, enjoy the webinar and thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Alessandra, for this presentation. I believe uh, 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 it addressed uh, several of the questions that uh, students uh, shared in the chat and in the questions uh, panel. And uh, now uh, we have a um, um, short talk by student testimonials. And uh, we have Giovanni Piunno, Matteo Parpanesi and Carlo Giovanni, who are respectively Giovanni's uh, PhD student, Matteo and Carlo are master students. Uh, and they will uh, talk about their own experience uh, with, uh, in general, civil engineering and the educational program Politecnico di Milano. And I would like to give first the word to Giovanni. And uh, he, so Giovanni, you were right before, so you entered at the right point in the presentation. But I believe uh, this is the best way to close this preliminary part with presentation with your own view about uh, the uh, studying at Politecnico di Milano. So please, Giovanni, and then uh, in sequence, Matteo and Carlo. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Can you hear me well? Yes. OK. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let's say today I want to talk to you very briefly about my university experience, hoping to be able to tell you what I understood during, uh, let's say, my journey and uh, also what I would have liked to know before starting. So, to do so, I will help myself with some keywords that I will link to the various moments of my uh, university career. So the bachelor, the master, and uh, now the PhD that uh, uh, I am doing uh, here at the Politecnico. So let's start with the bachelor. Uh, what I understood, let's say in part during the three years and uh, in part only after, is that the keyword to be linked to the bachelor is training. The bachelor is the uh, fundamental part, the milestone for the successful development of a career, uh, both professional and within the university. All the subjects and the theoretical aspects that you will be expected to learn uh, will transform your way of seeing the world. So it is like if the university gives you a new pair of glasses to see with and the bachelor is the eye exam before making the glasses together with the very first general version of your glasses. So you can understand the crucial role played by this phase and for this reason I would like to tell you that uh, if you are thinking of choosing the Politecnico di Milano as a school for your training, you are choosing well and moreover if you are choosing to do civil engineering at the Politecnico di Milano then uh, you are choosing the best. So the master program is uh, what you need to be placed and to place yourself in the marketplace. And for this, uh, I want to associate the keyword specialization to the master. So at this level, you have to choose uh, where to go by thinking of two things. First of all, you need to understand what things uh, you do best, because the things you succeed are the ones that give you the most satisfaction and therefore uh, in the long period that you will like the most. And uh, on the other hand, you uh, have to understand what are the directions uh, in which the market and the world uh, are going. And uh, for, for, for example, in my case, I have chosen geotechnics uh, and I must admit that maybe I have not followed the advice that I am now giving to you because maybe, for example, the geotechnical community uh, is a bit smaller than the structural one. But uh, however, I do not regret the choices I made because uh, there is a third keyword related to what happens after the master. Indeed, I believe that uh, the keyword to be linked to this third phase is passion and certainly when you start working, uh, you cannot expect to find your life's work right away, 
but uh, uh, in the long run, uh, the goal is certainly to get closer and closer to an activity, which in my case uh, is that of the research, uh, which makes you happy. So for this reason, the overall advice uh, I feel to give you is uh, uh, try to be one step ahead, try to be informed and understand in advance what you like, because the time you gain will be very useful to make the uh, important choices uh, of your life with more awareness. And uh, uh, so I finished, let's say, my very uh, small speech, and I want to thank you for your attention and wish you uh, all the best. Hello, everyone. I hope uh, that you can hear me. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, okay, please come here. Okay, I'm uh, Matteo Barpanesi, and uh, I'm a student of uh, structural engineering, which is a field of civil engineering. And uh, as well, I want to tell you uh, my personal experience uh, during these uh, five years at Politecnico, because I started my bachelor degree here, still in uh, civil engineering, then I continued with my master degree, and now I'm doing my master thesis in uh, structural engineering. So want, uh, what I want to focus on uh, is uh, the word innovation. Um, and in particular, what it meant to me during these five years and what it actually means to me now. And uh, uh, to start, I want to make a very simple example. And I want to think you about a material, a construction material uh, that is very commonly used in civil engineering, which is concrete. Okay. And starting from concrete, which is a very, very tiny part of the whole world of civil engineering, you immediately see lots and lots of innovation. Just think that in the past years, uh, new kinds of concrete were uh, invented. For instance, like self-healing concrete. So a concrete that when it cracks, it automatically heals itself. It cures itself and closes the cracks. Or for instance, uh, concrete that uh, absorbs the explosions. So imagine like a tunnel and the roof of the tunnel is covered by, these, um, by this concrete. When an explosion happens, this concrete crushes and absorbs the explosion, preventing the collapse of the tunnel. Or moreover, you, you may have like concrete that blocks the electromagnetic waves. Like before you had to have uh, steel rooms uh, to block the electromagnetic waves incoming. Now you may use um, this kind of concrete. So you see that just considering the most common element in civil engineering, let's say not the most common, but one of the most common, uh, you see lots of innovation. And uh, you immediately see that uh, by widening uh, your eyes, by looking around, uh, you see that civil engineering is actually very much wide. As you could see from a presentation of uh, Professor Palucci, um, Civil engineering is not just related to, let's say, bridges, let's say, skyscrapers, let's say, foundations, but it's much, much more. And what I understood during these years is that the more you study, the more you go deeper on uh, some topics, the more you understand that the whole world of civil engineering is actually much wider than what you think. So if I want to give you a suggestion, or as uh, Giovanni said before, if you, I, Basically, um, I want to tell like my past self uh, um, a suggestion. Do not think that civil engineering is just what you think right now. So what you have in mind right now in this moment, uh, but it's much more and you will discover it by basically studying or just being curious. So thank you for your attention. I hope that uh, like my message passed and I leave the floor to Carlo. Okay, so thank you, Matteo. I hope that uh, you hear well. And my name is Carlo, and I'm a master master thesis student in Politecnico di Milano. I'm a structural engineer too, as Matteo, and I did also my bachelor degree in uh, in Milano. And uh, what I would like to stress in my brief talk is about uh, the um, um, the opportunity we had to develop several. Uh, projects during the master uh, thesis and also the bachelor, uh, uh, the master degree and the bachelor degree. And uh, we had the opportunity to collaborate with other students, which is something that is oriented to the job uh, um, uh, world. And uh, we had the 
opportunity to collaborate with students from different backgrounds also. During my master's degree, I could collaborate with uh, students that came uh, all over the world. And this was something really impressive, in my opinion, because uh, it gave us the opportunity to open the mind uh, of, uh, uh, let's say, um, student that still is forming uh, his background with uh, experience that is uh, coming from uh, other universities, other countries, other backgrounds and uh, develop it all together. And uh, in my opinion, the key word of this is an uh, international oriented experience. Because afterwards, uh, if you are uh, willing to have the opportunity to uh, apply for a job or a PhD abroad, you surely can take this uh, in, uh, uh, in consideration and the people that will evaluate you will surely uh, uh, think about it. So probably um, try as Giovanni and Matteo suggested to think about uh, what would be your further step so that you can know with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, easiness which uh, can be the path and the road you should follow. And uh, the experience here has been uh, uh, really good for me and uh, the opportunity to uh, develop things with other students, uh, I think is uh, really uh, enjoyable. And I, I would kindly suggest you to uh, follow this, uh, this activity. So yeah, mainly that's it. I don't know if uh, I should... Uh... No, thank you guys. Thank you. I, I believe this was a great live session. It was super interesting to find um, about all the opportunities um, that Politecnico has for this civil engineering program. Thank you very, very much again. And I hope to see all the students in Milan very soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great Bye. day, night. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good luck. Bye.